we're here with Grant Gording of the Grant Hearing Center, and Grant and I go way back. We've known each other, like, we're figuring out today, 25 years or About something. About that, yes. Yeah, we worked out at the gym together, so I've known Grant for a long time, and your business has just taken off. Um, people like what you do because you provide a service for them. We do. What do you yeah. love about this? What, tell me what Grant's hearing is all about. Well, we, um, we started out in 1993, and we have gotten uh, so many people in and tested their hearing and been able to uh, give them better hearing. And that's what we ex get excited about doing. Do you think that people don't understand how much of life they're, they're missing? When they get to our age, and I get to include us in this too, our right. age and older, we don't. I think it happens all the time. Yeah, it's such a gradual thing when people lose their hearing that it, um, it just becomes a part of life. We don't understand that uh, we're not hearing, people are repeating themselves, and pretty soon it uh, becomes a head-to-head -head problem, and they finally come in and do something about it. So am I the only one, or is because, I mean, I have to tell you, I'm a little apprehensive about having a hearing test, because I kind of, there's, there's a part of me that doesn't really want to know, because right. I'm 56 and I don't want to know. Uh -huh. Is that pretty it common? Happens. Yes, it is very common, yes. And why should, why should someone like myself and, and go in and, and really do this? Well, it's really important to get a baseline test, and then we can document your hearing chart, and then as time goes on, like every year, every two years, we can retest your hearing and then uh, kind of gauge to see if it's stable or if you're losing a little bit more hearing. And today, the hearing aids are so much different. We'll show people in a little bit that, but it's, yeah. it's so different anymore. It is. But back in the day, they were big and bulky hearing aids, and now we've got streamlined digital hearing aids that are very, very minute. They fit way down inside of the ear and um, there's nothing to be ashamed of. They're just, they sound much better and they're very small. Young people, do you, uh, you test children and, 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 and young people, we have Emma's gonna get a test, but younger people get their yes, test. Yes, younger people, it's very important for them to get a baseline test. And then we forward that to their physician so they can keep that in, on their file. And um, just very important for all ages to, to know how their hearing is. We document it and then as time goes on, we can again, uh, be able to judge and see if there's any change. So once someone has a hearing aid, they kind of sell themselves, don't they? I mean, what you, you were telling me when we were talking once that w when they take them out, that people don't want to live without, we, we really don't want to live without our hearing. That's right. And it becomes something that's, uh, that we expect to hear good after they start wearing the hearing devices. I relate it kind of as eyeglasses. We take look, our glasses off and everything is blurry, we put them back on, everything's clear. The hearing is the same way. We take the hearing aids out and everything's kind of mumbly, put the hearing devices back in and uh, we enjoy the, the clarity of people's speech. Well, Grant, thanks for uh, letting us in and being supportive of the show. Oh, absolutely. I think this is really interesting because, you know, you don't start thinking about this. Oh, I, wanna, yeah. I know what I wanted to ask you. I want to ask okay. you this. What can people do? Because I know, like for me, um, this is probably my worst enemy. And I uh -huh. know that Grant, I should have known this, because Grant never wears earphones. He never had an iPod on at the gym ever. Right. And I'd be going around. But what, what, should you, what do you recommend to people about, about this? Well, I think it's important to, uh, to realize that long-term exposure to loud sounds can cause a hearing problem. And long-term may mean every day for an hour or two. So basically, we want to turn them down, keep them down. If, you're, if it's comfortable, take it down a notch or two and protect your hearing because it's really important over the years. Because probably 90% of us, I'd guess, probably turn these up a little bit louder because we want Led Zeppelin a little louder in That's our ears, right. don't we? Yeah, exactly right. So turn it down. Turn it down a little bit and uh, it'll still sound good. Or you're, you're going to have to turn it up someday if you yeah. don't turn it down <laughs> now, right? right? Exactly <laughs> right. right. Grant, thanks a lot. Okay, and thank we'll get you very much. For yeah, you betcha. Yeah. Grove, and we're going to talk about some stories we're producing today. We're going to talk to, anyway, that's, yeah, the South Lane Mental Health System. What is it? South Lane Mental Health. That's just what it is. Okay. Community. The South Lane Mental Health Society. Why? It's, it's South Lane Mental Health. It's not a society. I don't know why.